Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you. We have been working on this old school 1966 Gottlieb Masquerade pinball machine. And we did one video already where we worked on the bottom. It was really interesting because rats had gotten into it, which is kind of normal, but the weird thing was they only ate the wax lacing off of the line. So we meticulously went through and put the late, the uh, zip ties on it to get it all nice and clean again. And we are now on to video number two. So we're going to be working on the back box on this one. Now right here at the beginning of the video, I want to tell everybody to give us a thumbs up. That's the best way you can help out our channel. But I'll pull this thing out uh, from the uh, wall and we'll check out the back of the uh, back box so you can see what we're starting with because it's a little rough. Alright folks, so this is what we're starting with in the back box. This is a four player game, uh, but it's one of the early ones so there's only three reels for each player. And then it has a light, I think, that lights up whenever you get uh, over a thousand points instead of using a reel. Um, so everything's pretty cool. I'll show you what I was talking about with the lacing. I, I showed this on the first video. So they're, they use this wax twine to hold the loom together, the harness together, from the factory. And so that's how it usually looks. But it looks like, at first I thought that an operator had started taking stuff apart so that they could work on it. Because whenever they're like this, you can't see where the, the lines go. So if you have a short, sometimes you have to unwrap some of that stuff. So as you can see, all of these have been unwrapped. So there's just all these freaking wires, right? The whole bottom was like that. But if you look real close, whenever you find the twine, what's left of it, like the ends of it look nibbled and... There's little pieces of it here and there. I think a rat ate it all. Now, I've, I uh, was asking some people online about it, like on Pinside. And uh, a gentleman shared a video with me of somebody in their home uh, who had, I guess it's not a rat, it's a mouse, but he had, he had a mouse in his house. <laughs> I'm a poet. And I know it. He had a mouse in his house, and the mouse was eating wax, like a big chunk of wax that he had for, I don't know why the hell he had a big chunk of wax, but the, the mouse was eating the, this big chunk of wax that he had and ignoring peanut butter, which, you know, historically is how you catch and kill mice. But this particular mice mouse was uh, eating wax instead of, uh, he would walk right by the peanut butter and eat, eat wax. So apparently they love wax, and I've heard other people tell me that in uh, a lot of like newer cars and things like that, the the uh, wiring harnesses are made out of like a soy-based product, and the mice love that too. So apparently, a mouse crawled through this thing and started eating all of the wax twine, but left the wires. So hardly any of the wires are damaged. Some of them are right on the edge here, but to me, since it's always the one out at the end. This thing was stored with no back door, so I think that might be just physical damage that's happened while it's over the years. But I don't know, regardless of what caused it, we have to fix it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can tidy up this harness a little bit um, and put it back. So I'm going to use zip ties, and like I did on the bottom, I'm just going to go through and check pretty much every inch of every wire. And then if it looks cool, put a zip tie, and then check a little farther, and put a zip tie, and check a little farther, and put a zip tie. And we had the same exact problem in the bottom, and I got it back like this. And so this is the harness that goes up to the top. Put it all back together. Got everything clean. So now we're doing it on the back. All right. So let's get into it. I figured I'd mention, I'm trying to mention things further towards the front of my video than I usually do everything at the end. Uh, we've been telling people we have a second channel now too. So if you haven't heard, my brother Donnie has started a channel. A lot of people have because a lot of people have signed up. But if you haven't and you might be interested 
and some more of our Carolina shenanigans, go check out the My Brother Donnie uh, channel. He does a lot of like redneck repair, basically. So he does farm stuff, small engine repair. Uh, he's got a 454 engine that he's working on right now. We rebuilt a mobile home. <laughs> so stuff like that. If that sounds interesting to you, go check it out, My Brother Donnie. But I'll get the zip ties and start cleaning, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you see whatever I run into uh, while we tidy it up a little bit. So I want to show you what I'm doing. Just tidying, tidying it up, putting, trying to put everything back kind of where it goes. But there's a bunch of it that's came loose, right? So getting these bunches back together. And then there's a bunch of stuff going on here. There's on these these score reels are supposed to clip up in the top like that. That's what holds them in place. There's a little clip, right? But what's going on is some of the clips have been removed and the things have been slid back in the wrong place and all of that. And so that's making the wires stick out more. Um, so I'm going through and, and dealing with that. And so right on the end, in some places, the wire is bare. None of them are cut or anything. So there's a couple places that I had to put some electrical tape. I don't really like to put electrical tape because it's not really permanent, you know. But since I'm putting a zip tie around them, that helps a little bit, I guess. <laughs> there's probably like some paint on stuff you can put on it. Um, you could cut the wire and then uh, put a heat shrink around it and then... Um, join the wire back and then slide the heat shrink back over it. But yeah. So this is like the kind of stuff that I'm running into. Wire, it's got a, just a little bit of the insulation gone. And there's probably 10 places like this. So I'm wrapping it up with a little bit of electrical tape and then uh, putting it back in the loom where it goes and then zip tying the whole thing to hold it all together. I guess you could too do just that part with electrical tape and then electrical tape the whole thing. But I'm trying to make it where it's as minimal as possible so that you can still kind of see the, where the wires go because you run into problems where you need to troubleshoot and you need to trace wires down. So um, I'm trying not to hide all of this stuff. I mentioned in the other video that this game was stored without the, the back door on it. And whenever that happens, you get this issue where everything fades so you can see how the colors have all faded to where it's hard to, to tell you know them apart especially at first glance if you start looking at it and really getting down into it you can figure it out but like look look at that so you might think why did they do it like that they didn't they didn't do it like that if you look down in the cabinet where you know it had the play field protecting the wires they're all different colors you know so they're a lot easier to tell apart so you've got oranges yellows reds greens grays and whites you can even tell the difference between the gray and the white i think they call the gray slate usually but uh everything is discernible and that's how it would have been in this back box originally too but they left the back off so it gets all this dust on it and uh it won't clean off or anything but it just fades everything away makes it very hard to tell what wire is what wire but we usually figure it out um so yeah so i've, I've put probably 30 zip ties on it so far just working around over to about here so i gotta get that a little better and you can see where in some places the that's the wrapping. So is that cut or nibbled? Hmm, now remember when they nibble, their teeth are very sharp. I don't know, I don't know. But the ones like this where it's on, on the edge, I, that fuzzy one, I think that's just from abrasion where it's been stored on his back or something was put up against it and somebody's had this for 20 years doing this <laughs> and it's it's all the places that stick out a little bit that are worn so 
yeah, we're getting there. So I'll keep working through it. And then once I get it where everything's nice and neat, I can start servicing it. So I'll go through and clean all the relays and all the switches on them and rebuild these two stepper units. And this replay unit, if you look close, the entire replay reel is gone, but you don't really need it. That's just the thing that you see through the front glass that tells you uh, uh, how many uh, plays are left on it. So I'll let you see that up close whenever we get down there and start working at it. Yeah, it's coming together a lot, right? This will hang down inside the cabinet and the, uh, the other plugs will plug into it from the bottom board. That's getting much better. So I got over to this thing. Whenever we got it, this thing was just hanging there. And uh, it is the 0-9 to nine unit. Um, so I, put, I finally put a clip in it and mounted it back up where it goes, but look at this. Uh-oh. So there's going to be there's going to be a bushing in there that's broke, I think. We'll find out when we get to it. The good news is, though, if you run into stuff like this that's 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 broke, and it, so it's been like that for God knows how long, and if the head was off of it, it would be really easy to bang that on something. I mean, it was just hanging down here. Um, so that's probably been broke for a long time. The good news is, though, on stuff like that, a lot, the pinball resource makes a lot of that stuff. I don't know for sure that they make whatever's messed up on it. Maybe we'll get lucky and nothing's messed up, but um, uh, we can probably get a new one. Not the whole thing, just whatever that part is that's screwed up. And if we can't, we can buy a, a, uh, a parts 0 to 9 unit um, and fix it. So now we're, we're up to two things that are screwed up for sure. <laughs> Something's going on there. And this replay unit wheel is missing. We, you can get by without that because we set them on free play anyway. But uh, if we can figure out a way to replace it, we will. But man, if the thing's like $50, I ain't doing that. So we'll just do without. So uh, we'll see what's going on. I'll keep working through it. I'm, I'm, to, I'm to here now. <laughs> this side doesn't look as bad. Okay, folks, so I did my little fixing all of the little messed up spots. And now, you know, we had that problem with the center piece. So I pulled that out and disassembled it. So it goes in there like that. Um, remember it was bent. So I wanted to see what that was so that I could uh, order something if I need something. So I took off the wheel. Everything was cool. Took off the mount. That was cool. You see I had issues. <laughs> and so I got down to the um, this gear. And I believe it's cool. Although I, you know, it's hard to tell. I think even if it has a little wobble in it, I think it's alright. But basically what had happened was that piece. So this was the the uh, this wheel, you know, mounts on these two, and then in the middle, this goes there. Now it's like a press fit that broke loose, and while I was beating on the damn gear to get it out of there, because it was all stuck, I press fitted it back in with the hammer. So I think if I pound this in with a hammer. It'll hold. What do you think? So that's our issue. That's what we're looking at. I think though once I get it in and it's holding snug, if I've got the gear where it slides in like it should, everything will be fine. So it should go in like this. But right now it's too tight. So I, th I think I've either boogered up the end of it or something. So I've got to get it where this will go through this nice and once it does I think I'll be able to put it back together. So let me see what I can figure out here. 
Okay, so I just cleaned up the end of it with a file a little bit. It looked like just where the set screw was had had made it. I think they just, I think they sprayed WD-40 on it. WD-40 is like horrible for lubrication, but, and think about that, folks. How many times have you seen me say that a way of doing something is wrong? Right? I never say that. I'm telling you, WD-40 is a bad idea, folks. Uh, so it was all gummed up in there and it was all over this crap. So anyway, I cleaned it up and then right where that set screw has been hitting right there and right there, see this one doesn't matter, but you see it like deforms the metal a little bit. So I just, uh, tried to get it to go through that, let's call it a gromule, <laughs> whatever it is file it away a little bit until it's nice and smooth and everything is acting like it wants to cooperate and so we do that enough and so then I took the gromule or whatever it's called and uh, put it back in the hole and BAM hit it with a hammer and it seems to have set it back in there now let's see if I'm going to be all right or is it going to give me problems yeah see so now we're free willing like it should be so I can do this with one hand bam that's how it should be back in place back in business now let's use the coil interfering with it so as it goes around it should make some noise so I need to oil some more of this stuff but as you can see it appears that that is sitting in there like it should we are back where things ought to be maybe or maybe not but we're getting there at least that may need to go up where that gear touches it maybe it goes in a little farther I don't know no it can't that's about where it's supposed to be okay so we're getting there though. So I'll keep oiling it and putting stuff back together and we'll see. But I think uh, I think I'm going to get away with being able to use the original mount there as long as I don't get crazy with it. Okay, so we're getting back on there. It looks like it might be twisted a little bit though. If it's twisted a little bit, that might give me problems. But. First time that's moved in a long time, people. So I'm going to try to clean the uh, rivets, and then we got to put this back on there and see if it mounts flat. If it mounts flat, we're home free. But if it's cocked a little bit, you might get the problem where it touches the rivets over here, but it's off the rivets over here. You can adjust this. You can adjust the the thing, the mount on there. Um, but sometimes, if you're if you're crooked, it just causes you problems. So I don't. I can't quite tell yet, so I'll clean those and then we'll see if we can mount it on there and see if uh, we save that sucker. Okay folks, so here's what we came up with. It may be a little bit crooked. See, you can see it's a little bit. It's off a little bit. Um, which is what I thought, but it doesn't really matter because all it does is these little wipers go around to different uh, rivets. So. If it, uh, since this is one with just one relay to, all it does is just keep turning. There's no home position on this particular one. I guess there could be some where there's a home, home position. But uh, on this particular one, there's no home position. It just keeps turning around and around and around and around and around. So I cleaned up the rivets. I put some synthetic grease on it so that it moves really good. And uh, so as you can see, see how this top one is right dead on the rivets? And each time I pull that in, it moves to the next one, and it still lines up, right? Well, if you go over here to this next one that's coming along, it's lined up on the rivets, right? And then the final one is this bottom one. And it's also lined up on the rivets. So no matter where they are, as it spins around, everything's lined up on the rivets. 
so it doesn't matter if it if it's a little crooked. And then also, the way these things are made, they move a little bit, so they'll go up and down depending on the uh, how the so over here they'll be farther out, but over here they'll be farther in. I didn't add that jumper. That's not the best way to do that because it makes it a little bit too stiff. See how they both move at the same time? You're better if just one of them moves. Let me show you. See how just one can move because this wire is, isn't so stiff? But it'll work like that. All right, so I think we probably fixed that. So the back door, whenever it gets mounted on here, you know, it's way back here. So all this stuff will get pushed in by the back door, which is why I think the wear, I don't think it was rats. I think it was, this sticks out too far. So if you store it anywhere or you're putting a back door on it, it's going to rub all those spots right where they're sticking out. But that's that. All right, so we rebuilt that one. Uh, I'm going to clean some of these relays so I can get that done. I guess it's these here. There's three. Um, and then there's six there. So I'm going to clean through those. If I find anything weird on them, I'll let you know. Uh, and then we need to mess with the score reels. This uh, balls played unit, it says. And the replay unit. Alright, folks. So we about finished it up. Uh, I cleaned all of the relays right and I solved a mystery this stepper unit here uh, I was able to clean up it's the balls played unit so we got it stepping you want to see it step that's what you want people you want it to be snappy <laughs> and as it goes around you can see every time it hits the rivets it's on the rivet that's all the way so then we gotta go the other way. So I solved a mystery while I was doing it. I, whenever, whenever I pulled off these relays to work on them, I found something special. Let me show you what I found. Okay, so I folded down the back panel because I need to take out this back glass. We're going to do that here in a minute. But I wanted to show you what I found. When I took these relays loose, look what's hiding behind them. You might not even be able to tell what I'm talking about. This coil, that bell mounted right there. So I found this broken bell in the game and I couldn't figure out where it came from. It goes right there. And it's cracked. Mm-mm-mm. So stay tuned for a later video because the Pinball Resource makes perfect reproductions of these. Can you believe that? They actually make the whole assembly, but all we need is the bell. So uh, stay tuned for that. Another thing I wanted to show you is when you lean this back, these little brackets catch it. So it can only go so far. That's why it's staying there. It's just leaning on those little brackets. But look at this. The way they designed it, it almost smashes that that ball count unit not quite so it's in just the right spot okay so I replaced most of the bulbs I can do the, most of the rest of them after we take the back glass out but I could do them now so I mean you don't have to take the back glass out to do that but it'll just be easier so I'm gonna slide this back glass out uh, so that we can paint it up in the next video because we're about as far as we can go on this back box uh, until we get parts in. So we need the, uh, there's some little clips that I need and I need the, I ordered a, a replacement 30 volt hold coil and I need that replacement bell. So there's a little bit of, a little bit of stuff that we still need for it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and slide the, uh, the glass out while I've got it all open. The way you do that is you take this little bracket off here and this little bracket off here and then very carefully now I'm not going to do this while I'm trying to fumble this camera around because if you break this freaking glass, that's all she wrote. We ain't going to get another 1966 masquerade back glass anywhere. 
Do you see one laying around anywhere? So be on your P's and Q's whenever you're doing this, people. Uh, so I'm gonna take these two little brackets loose and then I'll slide that out and I'm gonna go lay it on one of these other uh, machines so we can get a good look at how bad it is. All right, folks, so I popped it out very carefully. And this is very typical. This is how they usually look on, on uh, these games from the 60s. So here's how you fix them. I'm, and now in the next video, we're going to paint it, right? But um, right now, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. So you pull it out, and then if you've got stuff like this on it, trash, you got to be very careful cleaning this thing because see how that's bubbled off? If you touch that, it'll fall off. You don't want that. Like this, you're about to lose all of that. You don't even want to touch it. So like that, for instance, I'm not cleaning that. That's just going to stay like that for the rest of eternity. <laughs> right? You can't clean it whenever it's like that. Stuff like this, though, if you look, you're pretty good. You got one little spot there that's trying to come up, right? So you can very carefully clean it off. Right, just to clean it up. So what you're trying to do is get it as clean as possible, but you're not looking for perfect, people. If you try to go perfect, you're going to make it much worse. All of that, don't touch it. Right? So that's just a flake that's came off something else. You know, so you can very carefully clean it up a little bit. Now, if it's salt, if it's Solid you can you can go ahead and wipe it down with something, but don't spray anything on it or nothing. You're gonna regret it Okay um, So once you get it clean you want to take it like a wet Rag with Windex on it or something and carefully clean the windows So all of this I will carefully clean and by carefully I mean when you get to the edge You can't rub that if you touch that it'll fall off You want to try to save as much of that as you can um, and it depends on how complex the art is and everything. See this up here? So you can see just how bad it is. Right? We're, we're losing big areas. <laughs> right? So you want to you get these clear areas as clean as possible. You want them to be... You don't want any cobwebs or anything stuck on them. Now a lot of that is on the front, on the other side. Um, so, you know, you might, while it's still in the thing, in the game, you might want to clean off the front so that you can tell whenever it's really clear. Whenever you get it really clear, okay, I mean, really, as clean as you can get it. Now, like I said, don't go crazy. You want to take triple thick. This is for pottery. Bright glass-like coating, super high gloss finish, non-firing glaze for bisque. Plaster and more dries in minutes. So it's called triple thick. The reason you want it is because it's super thick. That's the whole purpose of it, right? And it's clear. So you want to, if, if, I, if I get near this and spray that, it's going to spray all those little pieces off. So you can't do it like that. You got to like stand back a little bit. Try to go straight down on it so that if it does put any pressure on it, it just kind of pushes it down. What you're trying to do is basically put a thick, triple thick layer of clear coat paint all over the areas that are screwed up and then whenever that's sticking up it'll get stuck in that paint that's clear right and then you take a piece of saran wrap and put on it and then you can push down on the paint chips and push them back into place so I've done other videos showing you how to do it but um, Basically, you push the you push the stuff back down flat, and then once you get the saran wrap on it, you put something on top of the saran wrap. The purpose of the saran wrap is so your finger or whatever you're pushing on it with doesn't get stuck in the paint. So you spray sticky paint all over it, and then you put a piece of saran wrap over the paint, and then push down on that. This side of the saran wrap is dry. That side of the saran wrap is completely covered in paint and you're pushing the chips back down into the paint. Once you get them where they go, you stack something on top of it that's heavy, 
it's a piece of glass, folks, so don't go crazy, but just something that'll hold that paint down flat, and then you let the paint dry. And the chip will dry back in place flat. So the best place you'll see it is up here. Whenever we do it up here, that will go right back down flat. Okay, so once you do that, and you, you do everything, so you, you spot do the places, and but you, you coat the entire thing, right? Um, now, you don't do saran wrap and then paint this part because you'll get paint all over the saran wrap. Don't do that. So you kind of have to do it in sections, you know, but uh, just be smart about it. Whenever you overlap the paint, so like if you paint this much, you know, you want you don't want to stop right in the middle of the window and then do it again because you'll see like a break where you stopped painting and started painting again. So you might do it up to here and then stop here, do your saran wrap or whatever, and then do the that part and do whatever your saran wrap is that you need to do. And you can also paint it all and then go in and if you do it within just a couple couple minutes, you'll still have time to to mess with the part with the places that uh, have issues. Some of the uh, places like this, you probably don't have to push down too much. You just put the saran wrap over it and put something heavy on it. It'll kind of lay right back down where it's supposed to be. So whenever when it, then you let it dry. So you let it dry for a day or so. And after you after you let it dry, if you take your weight off of it, I use I was show that I'm using like a video game because we have a video game store. So. I weigh it down with like a couple games or something, nice and flat, right? So whenever you whenever you get done with that, you take your weight off and then pull on the saran wrap. It should just pull right off. Whenever it whenever it, the paint has completely dried, the saran wrap will just come right off. You can almost blow it off. So if you start pulling on it, it's sticky and stuff. Leave it alone. It's not dry yet. Let it dry some more. So once you get it done, once you get it dry and all the saran wrap off, what you will have is a back glass where the entire back of it has been coated with triple thick, and that crap is three times thicker than paint usually is. It's a glaze, so it will hold all of that in place. The reason this stuff flakes like this is because uh, heat and cold cycling makes the glass uh, expand and contract, expand and contract. And the paint expands and contracts at a different speed, right? So when you put the triple thick on it, it holds everything in place where you don't, it doesn't really have the option to break apart anymore. So once you get it where it's all triple thicked up and everything, nothing's flaking, everything's solid, you take acrylic paint and you use acrylic because you can wipe it off. You take acrylic paint and touch up all of the spots that have artwork missing. So that's what we'll be doing on the next video. But that's what we're starting with. Pretty rough. Am I right? Mm. Need some help, people. <laughs> you think we can get it? What do you think? Tear up my my uh, rails there with it. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing on the next video, and here's what we're what we finished up with today. I got to clean the the peekaboo lady. <laughs> She's the belle of the ball. Did you know that? Apparently, in the um, apparently in the uh, rules they call her the bell of the ball when was Beauty and the Beast written was it before 1966 I'll bet it was I wonder if they or I wonder if bell of the ball was just a term that people used back then anyway we're going to fix up the bell of the ball in the next video because we're going to get that backlash ready and put it back in there now uh, I haven't been able to plug it in yet because like I said we're waiting on some parts and stuff so but we're getting there. A lot of work in this one, folks, but it's going to be nice. The uh, I've been looking at the play field a little bit. It has a roto projector, a, a projector roto target in the middle of the play field. Holy moly. So some of the inserts, the values change whenever that roto target spins around. The lights light up different values underneath. Pretty cool. 
but we'll see that in the future. So make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you. Check out our brother's channel, My Brother Donnie. The link will be below. We've been working on cars and stuff over there. It has nothing to do with pinball, but you'll probably like it. It's really fun, and I'm usually over there on some of the videos with them, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, and then also, please click our Amazon link below if you get the inkling to buy anything on Amazon. We'd like to thank everybody that's been doing that. It's been really cool. It doesn't cost you anything. You just click the link, and then uh, it gives us a little royalty for uh, sending you to Amazon. So thank you to everybody that's been doing that. Make sure to leave your comments below. Tell us what you think so far, and we will see you on the next video.